no, what no, do you no, do? No, no, no. Bring the energy. Bring the energy. Bring the okay. energy. Go. Okay. One sec. Oh, nah. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. What's happening? This is a plick that plick applicable science. And we are here today talking about AI programming. My name is Amanda Harvey. I am a junior cell and molecular biology major from Woolwich, New Jersey. Get back at ya, Jersey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what's the energy? What's the energy? What's up, y'all? My name is Christopher Small. I'm a graduating senior electrical engineering major from Jacksonville, Florida. And last but not least, my name is Chauncey Upshur. I'm a graduating senior as well, computer engineering major from Law, Maryland. Oh, yeah. So like hey. Amanda <laughs> said, we are talking about artificial intelligence with a reflection point of racial bias. Um, so the lead off today is Chauncey Upshur. Chauncey, what is artificial intelligence? If you could tell us a little bit about it for the audience. Okay, so artificial intelligence, there's a lot of, it's a big tree, and a lot of things can form under artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. But what I see artificial intelligence is, it's basically a system where you can use, it's basically a system where we could replicate human thinking, but make it virtual. That is the the generic basic understanding of artificial intelligence. So now you may ask, how does this work? Digital or virtual? Sorry? So digital or virtual? Virtual. Okay. Okay. So you may ask, how does this work? Basically, artificial, I mean, artificial intelligence works by like combining a lot of data and it with a lot, large amounts of data with fast and like processing speed and then there's intelligent algorithms that go along with it and it's allowed the software to like um all the mac like all the mac you learn from patterns and features in the data so it can include but not limited to machine learning uh, neural network, and if you don't know what neural network is, is basically a type of machine that's learning that's made up of interconnected units, so data points. Yeah, can you please uh, tell the audience what machine learning is as well? Okay, I, I, okay. So machine learning is like machine learning is like learn like regular programming languages. So, for example, Python, if you don't know Python is, is a programming language, it's one of the many programming languages. There is C++, Python, Java, JavaScript, uh, regular C, and I can go into more. But that is just machine learning. Machine learning is basically the code or the inside of artificial intelligence. So, like, for example, okay. Okay. When, we're, when we're doing this call, if believe it or not, it's because of machine learning. We program the code so that you can do different activities onto the platform and it does different things. So for example, if I click a button like that to mute myself, it will it's a code. So once I press it, I will stop. Of course you can't hear me anymore, but that's because of the code that's written into the button. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So like once again, um, AI covers a lot of things like machine learning, neural network, uh, deep learning, um, what else, what else? Cognitive computing. That's also, if you know what um, cognitive computing is, it's a subfield of AI that like strives for natural and human-like interactions with um, machines. Okay. So kind of like some I, so kind of like some iRobot type of connection. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So artificial intelligence is just like, think of it a tree and a lot of branches falling under it. It's a big concept and a lot of things could fall under it. A lot of things can't. Another example of artificial intelligence is facial recognition. 
mm-hmm. because it used real time data, and then mm-hmm. it has to make I'm not gonna say conclusions, but you have to make assumptions on who this person is, and you can make those assumptions by having the right type of data. So, for example, looking through the system, seeing if my like for example, if you're doing my picture, you can cross match it with um like for example the DM the DMV the district um uh, not. Di- I keep thinking Department of Motor Vehicles. Yeah, Department of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> he's, uh, he's from I, I DMV. Don't, you don't know what the DMV really means. <laughs> I don't recognize the that DMV. The real DMV is DC, Maryland, Virginia. But <laughs> in other terms, since everyone is having like a driver's license, the machine learning or the um the uh Facial recognition can cross match it with those pictures and they can cross match with my picture of my face and then they can make the assumption saying, okay, this is, this looks very similar to this other person and it's like a 99 or 98% match. So they said, okay, based off of this, we are assuming that that is Chauncey. Yeah. So like so, when I think of like AI, I think of like smart house where the house gone has gone mad. The Disney movie, oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, yeah. So like when I think about that, like there's a lot of like negative connotation towards AI. Like why do you think that is? Because they think that in the future, it is a proven fact that the way technology is advancing, especially during this crisis, is going to like, they're going to be a time where we create um computers and, and things that are way smarter than humans and honestly there are they're not there's not a lot of systems that can fit the bill but there are some systems that can say okay this is smarter than a human or average human i should mm-hmm. say now people may have negative connotation because you've seen the movie with will smith with the um with him fighting yeah i'm him. robot yeah so people is having that connotation because they think when uh when like intelligence or artificial intelligence get to a certain level, they'll think, okay, I don't need this host anymore mm-hmm. and I can do things on my own. So once they get that level of st- understanding or making decisions like humans, then they think that, okay, they're going to basically backstab us and like saying that um, they will be the superior race versus mm-hmm. humans. Until they, they got to operate. Until they gotta operate by the three laws, and then Will Smith starts saving the day, shooting all the robots down. So, like, how, go ahead. I was gonna say, how do you feel about like the progression of AI, like, because it's readily advancing within like the uh, different countries. I mean, I support it because I hate to say this, but I mean, with artificial intelligence, it can make our jobs a lot easier. Yeah, that's but, right. but, given that, that means there will be less chances to get a job for other people. So, like for example, but not necessarily. Not necessarily, it's taking away jobs, but at the same rate, it's giving even more jobs. So we, I think, as the educational system, especially in the U.S., we need to focus more on STEM education and STEM improvement in the earlier pipeline. So elementary, focus more on math. Not saying that the regular subjects aren't as important as well as or science. It's just that that's where the field is going in the future and we have to emerge with STEM uh, on a daily life. So then my question for you, Chauncey, is like, why is artificial intelligence for all facets or all, all sectors of the economy? So why is it important for the teacher? Why is it important for finance? Why is it important for the janitor, plumber? a garbage person like why is it they don't they're not the ones coding it they're not the ones looking at software every day they're ordinary people just doing a regular job so you're basically asking why is it important yeah why is it important for people that's not directly connected with with it or stem related i mean just think about it because like now that you like for example it makes like i hate to say it makes a lot of things easier but there are certain things that are like definitely important so like for example 
banking use artificial intelligence? So let's say I wanted to deposit a check, right? Yeah. Artificial intelligence is will take the check and basically first convert the handwriting written because some checks are handwritten versus computer type and convert that into language that the machine learning or the AI can understand. And then they can convert that language or convert the uh, information gathered into like wherever job is necessary. So if I'm depositing a check, I mean, I'm depositing a check, they'll first to make sure that the, it's an actual check. Then they will make sure that I, that like that money, like is connected to an actual company. And once they do all the prerequisite, then they'll approve it and then send the money to my bank account. I got you. So, so once it started hitting that, once AI started hitting everybody's pockets, that's when it becomes very important. Yeah. So like it's it's as simple as that. Mobile because you can deposit check through your mobile um uh mobile app, you can get your money instantly. Like for example, when I deposit check through USAA, I can get that money literally right after I deposit it. They already so put the money into my bank account. So let me hold a dollar. Yeah, you can kick rocks. <laughs> <laughs> but like going back to you, I'm just saying it's important because humans can't do all that information all at once. Like if you do the stopwatch and like compare a human to an AI, it's not even a challenge. They will do it in under 10 seconds and it will take more. It will definitely take 10 seconds more for a human to do that. So that's just a simple reason why we need AI, because they help us with finance. But, and that's what I'm talking about, about losing jobs, because if, like, I understand what you're saying about making more jobs, but that requires more people to learn programming languages. And not many people are ready to do that, because everyone still thinks it's the frozen age and think, oh, since it's... I understand that oh, you need artificial intelligence stuff, but there's always jobs that you need as humans. And I agree with that, but it's very, it's shrinking very fast. The only jobs I can say for certain that are safe are engineers, uh, people in um, health department, like doctors, nurses, physicians, um, yes. Lawyers. <laughs> she had to throw the she had to throw the PA in there. If you didn't know, if you didn't know, audience, Amanda is a aspiring a physician assistant. Um, yes. So that's why she had to throw it in there. <laughs> but um, lawyers, anything that requires more human interaction is most likely going to like always stay there. Because if you think about it, when you're in the hospital, you don't want most likely you don't want a robot to take care of you. But I. Now that, you, now that you say that, I think but it's all about preference. It's all about preference, though. I don't know. Once we get more comfortable, because I think, mm -hmm. I think we are scared of AI because we don't know what it could be. You fear stuff that you don't understand yet. And the general population, what we're trying to do now is getting them um, background information of what AI really is and giving them the education aspect of it. Once they figure it out, what it is and what it could do. I think they'll become more comfortable with it because in the future, I believe that AI is going to expand so much that we won't even have to leave our house to go to the doctor's office. And they're already starting to do that now because of coronavirus or COVID-19. So I think in the future, I think we're going to be more comfortable even doing it with artificially intelligent robots operating on us because they can be very more precise and they won't have as much mistakes dealing with our own body. Um, so we'll look at in the future, we'll probably look at a robot more precisely and more credible than an actual human doctor. So if you think about like Wally, -E, the movie, like yeah. you can just it just shows you what the what happens when you have technology take over the entire world. People are reliant on it. That's a, that's the yeah. thing. Once you become reliant on something, then you get used to it. I like I agree with you, um, Chris, and I like since I'm for it. I think it would be better to have like AI do doctors. I mean, like be um, like when they do surgeries, when they get mm -hmm. to that certain level of precision and let it do surgeries. Because like I said, artificial intelligence, most of the time, nine times out of 10 is more accurate than humans. So, and they're more, 
once they once we get it to like be able to program once we program it well to learn things it can response if we respond to things like real-time data more quickly than humans okay. but so, i think in like certain aspects though um artificial intelligence doesn't understand how pe people are like how they feel so like i'm thinking like in a healthcare perspective what if you have a robot taking over the healthcare industry they don't understand that um certain people have different pain tolerance some people might be lying so they're just prescribing stuff but they're not actually taking into account who these people are where they come from everything like that it just takes if, like medical history how they're feeling here here's the here's the drugs but and that's that's not good that's something very hard for even a person to program into a robot. We, we're we barely understanding what emotions are. We have a, book, a bunch of books about emotional intelligence, um, books about how to control emotions. What we don't know is specifically, we can, we're doing research in neuroscience about different parts of the brain that are uh, lit up or they're highlighted, neutrons are highlighted with the different connection points. We're still doing research on how different emotions are are set off in our brains, but mm -hmm. we don't understand it enough to where we can program it into a robot. We don't know have a robot know our emotions. But when a robot know it looks at us, it just it's just I don't even know what a robot would think. Because mm -hmm. I'm not a robot. I'm not Will Smith. Like so, like that's why I feel like I feel like that's why people like. You should use it as an aid, but you can't be like, use it as your sole discrepancy. Like, so like, this is the reason because the robot said this, like you have to use other sources as well. Yeah, I got you. So now I mean, tie, that, tie that back to the original reflection point. Um, even in the healthcare, I think robots, if we don't get it down packed with artificial intelligence being racially biased, it's very, it's going to be very, discriminatory or discriminating against people of dark complexion, including ourselves and other minority groups. Um, so Amanda, since you want to be a PA, like how do you feel about this? Because it's already it's already racial bias in the healthcare as is. If we add artificial intelligence on top of it, it's gonna be like crazy. Mm-hmm. Cause you think about it, um black females are like the like the worst treated in like yes. all of healthcare. So it's I'm just thinking about it as that. I'm like, I wouldn't want a robot telling me what I should get and everything. Like that's why people like oh, yeah. black people like black doctors because they understand them more rather yeah. than. Now, in defense for people who's actually creating um, AIs, the reason that it's like that is because basically how they're trained. Because if you're, like, for example, if I was trained to thinking, for example, if I'm trained to think that basketball is everything, just for, um, just for example, I'm going to think basketball is everything. I won't be able to think about other sports like football, baseball, soccer. I will only be thinking about basketball because I, that's where I was trained and that's how it was raised. So your mm -hmm. program. So, huh? Your program. Your program. Right. But what – the difference is that when it came to like when we're establishing like when we're doing actual process and stuff it's not much diversity so when you actually like train the robot sort of sort of say to like understand certain aspects of different things they're only going to be they're only going to recognize what they see from training so for example um there was a, a research that I, I was picked up, it was from the natural, like the nature uh, website. I will make sure I, we will put the link at the bottom so that you can, in the comment section so you can see it. But what, um, what they was talking about was the, the information that was gathered, it was very skewed. So, all right, so you know how USA is like only responsible for like, maybe 4% of the major population of the world. We're going to have to fact check that, but okay. This, I, this is what, this is the information I got from the, okay. the uh, website. If you have a source, if you have a source, I'm not going to knock it. We'll put the, for the audience, we'll put the link in the description below. Okay. So it was talking about only like 4%. 
and they use like a specific website to like basically scrap data off of it. And if you don't know what web scrapping is, it's basically analyzing data using information from a website. That's what web scrapping is. But they're web scrapping a certain website that only that's like over 40% is coming from the United States. So there's not much diversity into the training data. And because of that, they're not able to basically find thing, other things from different ethnicity, like black and Indian or Asian. Mm-hmm. They're only used to like a good, like a great source data or a great um, survey of white people. I hate to say it like that, but most of the, the data the information, yeah, yeah the most of the information was from white people because it was overflowing with that information. So they was able to get that down to like per, a precise degree but for like people like of uh, our descendant, there's not many from that from inside the uh, data. So that's why there's not like that's why there's so much racial bias. Because we're not the ones creating the, the software. We're so we're still catching up. I think mm-hmm. we're doing a better job in technology. We're trying to get ourselves into the diverse fields. But at the same time, some of these institutions or companies don't want to hire us because they have some prejudice or some racial bias subconsciously or consciously that they just don't know of. Um, so we have to get in those positions, get people in those positions of software, computer science, computer engineering, however, it may be, whatever your path, whatever your path takes you to get to that position and make sure you are culturally responsible enough to make sure you having your voice heard and your input taken seriously in those positions. Cause otherwise you're just going to be, a poster child for them and you're just not gonna have your opinion credit so um the one research and one article that i was reading um uh, don't want to butcher her name um uh, but i'll put it in the description below uh, one of the mit grad student researchers she was doing research on facial recognition and she she was playing around with the algorithm making sure it worked she tried to use her face. Obviously, she's a darker complexion, so it didn't work for her. But all her white counterparts, it worked perfectly fine. And then the big caveat is she put on a white mask and it instantly worked, which is crazy to me. In 2020, we are still having some form of racial bias, even in technology, when we're supposed to be in this quote-unquote post-racial society, which is obviously not true. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's dangerous, like, um, on that same video, they were talking about facial recognition within the Black communities, and how they had it, they were supposedly had it in Detroit and Chicago, and they weren't telling the people that they were doing this, and law enforcement was using facial recognition, so it's very dangerous, because one, this technology does not work for the people who live in that neighborhood, which is predominantly Black areas, and also, it's recognizing the wrong people. Yeah. So it's just like at this point with the people doing all the AI program and programming and doing that, they're all predominantly white people and they're predominantly white industries. So until we diversify those areas and get some more inclusion, I feel like AI programming should not be a main factor in a lot of things because it's just not accurate. It's really biased and it doesn't factor in all people of color. Yeah. Like, um, I was watching the same video, Amanda, and then they were talking about um, different companies like Microsoft would stop using, would stop selling part of facial recognition to police departments and sheriff's offices because they falsely targeted minority groups or dark and complexion groups. And it's just, it's just, I mean, we've been targeted our whole entire lives, whether we we don't like it, but it's, mm-hmm. it's we've always been targeted. Any decade, you can always find some stop and frisk or anything stuff like that, or just implementation, putting into our communities and destroying our communities from the jump. But yeah, we have to just get over this totem pole and get over this hurdle and try to get some inclusion in there and force mm-hmm. ourselves if we don't want to open it as well. Because another thing with, like, AI programming, it makes me think, like, 
those people who run the um who do all are in those industries they're predominantly rich white males so with them making trying to put ai programming more into society all it's doing is bridging that wage gap because they're taking away regular people's jobs they're targeting the low low economic um, minority areas high minority areas so with me it just makes it feel like it's gonna if it keeps going like that it's just gonna build an even bigger gap and make it even harder yeah that's just one thing like with engineering and stem related stuff like i know oh this might get me in trouble let me let me let me think about it. <laughs> I'm gonna just say it anyway. So I know with engineering, the defense, the defense industry, they try to get you in there, but some students like myself don't really want to harm individuals. We want to defend our country, which is very important. But at the same time, we don't want to harm other individuals. So I think something like activism engineering is very crucial. Um, if you don't know that term, I'll drop the link in below for a good article that I read and um one engineer in his field is doing that just like that so activism engineering or just activism stem whatever professional making sure you're doing contributions to the world that actually help it instead of destroying it and harming individuals that just i mean maybe they want to harm you as well so you have to just you have to scrap but if it's not necessary if it's not a necessary evil i wouldn't advise doing harm but that's just me that's just me mm -hmm. by the way i just I, while when we was I was talking, I fact checked it and yeah. So United States is the third most populous country in the world, but China, and India, and India is responsible for over thirty percent. So, but does that? But did they say how much percent U.S. actually has? So you said four percent of the population. Yeah, it's if okay. we want to be exact, it's four point two five. Wow, I did not know that. I didn't. I would have thought U.S. accounted for way more than mm -hmm. 4.25 think about it. china and india have over a billion and united Man. states is just like 330 million i kind of assume that because china they have like the restriction where you can only have i think it's like one child no they got rid of that <laughs> oh so so you can't have any children no no you cannot you can have as much as many kids you uh, want to leave okay. that was uh wait what were you referring to so they had a governmental, they had a, uh, I don't want to call it, they had a federal law, I guess, is what you call it in China. They had a law where the parents can only have a certain amount of kids because the population was getting out of hand. It was at its carrying capacity almost. So they had to put a, a law in, into it where you can only have a certain number of children. Just um, because resources were getting low and land was getting low as well. So, but yeah. I th yeah, but back on the um, racially biased, I think that AI yeah, could, yeah, is re currently racially biased, but there has to be some serious improvements in it. So I don't think it should be, I think we should still continue to research it because like, I, I like like the idea of like neural network and machine learning that that can be very useful. Cause like when I was going on, like different tours and stuff with the Department of Defense, they were using like different machine learning and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that can be very useful in, in like a, um, military strategies and stuff like programming robots to aid you. But like, as you see, like they don't rely heavily on it either. Mm -hmm. So I think that's as a country, that's what we need to focus more on. Like yeah. with that mindset. Yeah. even. Even a better example that we definitely forgot, so I'm bringing up now, is bathroom appliances. So I know I, on a daily basis, if I'm going to a public restroom, whether it be in a, a public setting or a store of some sort, and they have, or the airport, matter of fact, and they have the automatic hand sensors, whether it's for the hand, fire, the paper towels, the sink, the soap at least like that's crazy it takes me a couple of times to get it going but another person with a, a lighter complexion than me boom instantly like it didn't click it didn't click in my mind until probably a couple of years ago i'm like 
this makes no sense. Like, why do I have to keep going through all the, I have to go through multiple attempts mm -hmm. to, to get the same result, which I mean, that's pretty much the, that's just pretty much the summary of, of African American slash black community lives, like, or just minorities in general, they have to go through hurdles just to get the same result. And it's, it's just, it, it is, it is what it is. It has to change one day, but it is what it is right now. And that makes, um, I think Chauncey said before that, uh, would you say Google, like the search engines AI? Yeah. So okay. The search engine does use a form of AI, like targeted ads. So, or <laughs> like the conspiracy people say that they're listening on you. So they target different words that you say and they target ads immediately and you'll see it on your feed, whether it's on a social media platform or you're just doing a general search. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Um, things that are like, uh, when you was mentioning the um, engine search, uh, the same uh, website that I got the earlier information from, it also says that like, it's a little, it's more biased to men. And I mean, we can understand that because it yeah. hasn't, we, it's, we can easily say that equality for women is going up, but it's not one-to-one -one yet. And not, not by, a lot, not even by a lot. Nah, so it's, it's not, so like, no, for example, um, when I was at, like I said, at the same website, they was talking about uh, Google translation and they were saying that when they translate things that are like being speaking by women, they actually translate to say he said or he wrote. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not shaming Google Translate. I'm this is all based off of information that I got from an article. And it's not as it is not as frequent as was back in the day, because back in the day it was like four to one. And now that, that's pretty bad. So that means eighty percent of the time they will basically translate it to a he wrote versus if it was like written by an actual woman. But mm -hmm. now it's two to one. So it's much more it's getting there, but it's not, you know, it's you. still not as um enough. I got you. Like my fear with my fear with just technology in general, this is just me spilling, is that we'll have technology that targets us more. So it'll be, let me just reframe. The new Jim Crow, if you haven't read it, I would advise you to read it. It will change your whole view on the prison system and different things that happen in the African-American community, especially the poor sections of that. If you need to read it, the description will, the link, for the book will be in the description below as well. This book changed my view on it completely. Not completely, but it, it gave it more substance. So my fear is technology would try to trap us into a new mass incarceration, it's specifically targeting African-American males because they are the ones that are getting incarcerated at a higher rate than our population worth is for the United States as well. So that's just one of my fears with technology and facial recognition. I think it has a big advantage on trying to accomplish that goal. If you can target a person, uh, so let's say, I'm gonna use myself for an example. If you wanna target me and I do something completely wrong, I probably won't, I won't, I know for myself, but let's just say I do something wrong. So I didn't make a, a left hand turn somewhere or I didn't use, I jaywalked. Now the police are coming looking for me for jaywalking. And now I have to pay this insurmountable fine that was unnecessary. Like getting arrested for jaywalking is just unnecessary to me. But some people do it just to like somebody. Now I'm in jail for something that's so minuscule, like jaywalking. Now this is, that's just one of my fears. I don't, I don't know if y'all have any comments on that, but that's just one of my fears with that racial profiling. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing because it, even in that one video when they were talking about them using AI programming and facial recognition in Detroit, they wrongly arrested this one guy for and had him in captivity. 
for oh, we'll the one about the policing and facial recognition. Oh, we'll drop the link in the below as well. Mm -hmm. So they were talking about how when they used the facial recognition, the police department used it. They arrested the wrong guy and held him in captivity for 30 hours and didn't even fact check anything else besides his AI programming. And that, that's just an, another issue, like I said before, having in like predominantly um, black areas or minority areas. It's like they can they can control us even more because they like, oh, well, this program said this, like you must be guilty. Because <laughs> we already get targeted for being in a vicinity of a crime and not even a part of it. So who knows? Who knows? Who knows what else they can pin us on using AI? Once again, I mean, of course, you're right, but this all goes back to having diversity, especially when we're, when you're actually talking about, like, researching. So, I'm just saying a, a, a problem that could, like a, like, a problem that could be solved is having a more diverse training data set. So, if you have more, a big data set that are equally from each uh, race, some of those problems can easily be uh, um, solved, or I should say, it could have a impact. So the the uh, results could not be as I want to say, could not be as you know, because like you said about having a false person in jail, mm -hmm. they could it could easily be you know a little bit more accurate so that those problems don't appear as often as they should. One thing that, that comes to my mind based off the same video um, and with the um, researcher from MIT, um, these like, a few companies, once they realized their information wasn't as accurate, they went back and did more, more tests and updated their software to make it more inclusive. And they were like, oh, this has 99% accuracy. But then she went and tested it and did a whole paper about it the accuracy numbers were significant, significantly lower than what they said it was. And then they were like, oh no, this isn't real research. But then they, she had so much support from other people saying it was accurate. So it's like, and also another thing with policing, like regular cameras on the street and stuff, their quality is nowhere near the quality that these companies are using. So when they're looking at it, it's not gonna still be as accurate as, um, as, as they're programmed to be. So. I feel like there's still some progress that still needs to be done for them to even be relying on it. The fact that she had to, because this same individual uh, is an African-American woman. She's doing amazing work with the, in the field of machine learning. Um, we're going to, I'm going to have a, uh, a caption for her, her name, because uh, I don't want to butcher it. I want to respect it as much as possible. Um, but she's doing amazing work. She's a, she was a graduate student at MIT, the best, one of the best institutions in the world for STEM and technology. But she still wasn't given the respect it was due. She wasn't given the credit for her work. The company tried to tarnish it by not even not even respecting the, the art or the hard work that she put into it. She had to go to her peers to get credibility, which is still blasphemy to me. I mean, you're supposed to get you're supposed to get judged by your peer, your uh, the judge of your peers, or I'm I think I'm butchering the the term or the phrase, but you get the judge. You're supposed to be looked upon with your peers and be collaborative in that aspect. But the fact that she had to go to outsiders and get credit for something that is technically proven, there's work to be done, there's actual document and a whole paper on it. It's just it's just crazy. Like we still have much to be done. We still have a lot of work to be doing. To yeah, do the fact that yeah she had to get fact checked by other people is ridiculous of his own self. If the person has a degree and it's it's like knowledgeable, like it's accredited, like the university is accredited, they should have some saying in what they're talking about because they are they did some years in this type of research. And especially if she's getting like a master or a doctor, there should be no questioning or having her to go through other people to confirm her results. Because if that's the case, then what is the point of her getting a 
a higher level education. I thought the higher level education will give you more credibility. But if that's not the case, then there's no point in us getting um, like a doctor or a master. So, Dr. Mm -hmm. Joy. Dr. Joy is her name, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't want to butcher her last name, but um, it will definitely be in the description below. Uh, most definitely her article and her different researches on what she's found will be in the article in the description as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that all goes with being a Black woman. And people always saying you have to explain yourself and people not believing things we say or thinking less of our intelligence because we are what, Black women. What did Malcolm X say? The most disrespected person in America is the Black woman. The most unprotected Black person, I mean, the, the most unprotected person in the United States is the Black woman. So, yeah, a lot of arrows being shot at the Black woman, no help. Um, but I want to say, um, rest in peace to all our fallen soldiers um, through social injustice, um, all the way from Emmett Till and people that we don't know, people that didn't get the highlights. Um, thoughts and prayers to your families, if you're listening to this. Uh, thoughts and prayers to all the people that are, were highlighted um, in the national news, the media, um, your families. I hope you're um, taking it easy through your grieving. Um, I know you're still grieving that that's just one way you that's something that you will never forget and i'm so i'm i'm just sad it had it had it happened to your family member it shouldn't have ever happened but it's just it's just a sad case um yeah and so we'll we'll end off on that thank you ladies and gentlemen for listening to a podcast um, i hope you enjoyed the conversation uh if you like it if you like the conversation, you like our videos, like, like our uh, video, subscribe to our page, follow us on Instagram at applicable underscore science. That's our main uh, page. We'll have infographics about the different topics we'll talk about, um, promotion, and different snippet clips from our next episode. Um, for the first time listeners, can you all uh, give out your handles? Um, you okay. <laughs> My Instagram is Munda55, M-O-O-N-D-A-A, 55. And then my business is AVH Organics. So my business alert. Black business check alert. Us out. Check me out on Instagram. So word, word. <laughs> okay. Okay. Once Chauncey, again, I got rid of my social media. So <laughs> you sound so proud. <laughs> I, I am proud because social media will rot your brain unless it's for business purposes, which I support from this perspective. Mm -hmm. As long as y'all buy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> support her business. And last also, time. for our new listeners, if you have some comments, please let us know so that yes. we can make the show much more enjoyable and that you can come back. So please, we will answer comments. Just let mm -hmm. us know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, um, Chris, you can follow me on Instagram at tallboy underscore Chris. And uh, thank you for listening. And until next time, as Chauncey says. Stay cool.